when we go for the reservoir simulators, we have two kinds of uh, reservoir simulation models. One is the black oil, here you can see the black oil, and the other one is the compositional model. We have two models here that we are using in reservoir simulation. In black oil model, we are just using the, the phases like oil, gas, and water. Here you can see labels are gas, oil, and water. So we have gas, we have oil, we have water and rock. These are the components. This is how we define our model uh, in reservoir simulation. But in the compositional model, we define complete composition. For example, we have ethane, methane, propane, butane, and so on. We don't define there's oil. Okay, there's oil, but what components of oil? Like pentane, hexane, hectane, octane, nonane, decane, and so on. So we define all the processes in the in this one. Well, in some cases. Uh, now the question comes which one is more accurate uh, well both cases can be used in particular case okay there are many studies in some cases the this simple black oil model may work but in some cases the compositional model is important for example when we talk about the the water cloning issue the issue of water raising towards the completions maybe we have to use the compositional model then if you are uh, using let's say injecting the polymers or ur processes so you can have to use the composition but once you have the very simple process like you are just injecting the gas and you are just so you can talk about the simple black oil model so both can work but we have to make sure that which one is, uh, is more perfect and so on so when we talk about the reservoir model what we do well, we input gather all our data. Now, for example, you are working as a reservoir simulation engineer. The company has hired you. So what you will do? What will be your assignment? What you will do? You will first thing, you will gather all the input data. You will record fluids, rock data. You will have fluid data. You will have pressure, well test data. You will have PLT, production logging data. You will have completion data. You will have data from the geology department, production department, drilling department, logging department. Uh, well test data you have you will have from pvt data you will have rock data so there will be a database where all this data is stored and you will have access of it then after you have data you are going to define your grid block size you know the what kind of simulation you are going to do and so on and then you will define the wells and pressures and so on so you define your data you define the grid blocks you define the control how many wells you are going to put and after you set up your you can run the, the prediction and i will show you how is the, it is done well as i said once you run your simulation okay you get your results but you have to make sure that the production rates has to be matched with the real performance this is the first thing i mean you cannot look into after 10 years for example now your well is producing uh, in one year it has produced uh, 50000 barrels so this is the real performance. So your model that you have developed and run on reservoir simulation, it has to show that the reservoir fluid you have produced is 50,000 barrels in a year. If you it's if your reservoir model says 100,000 barrels per day, it is not going to work. So you have to adjust the parameters in order to correct this uh, errors and make sure that the uh, the the res simulated and the real both gives the same results. We correct adjust many uh, parameters here, and uh, here you can see the chart. We have the gas oil ratio versus time. The one is the simulated, and this dotted one is the real one. And you see now they are in quite good alignment in this case. Here, here you can see that. So the real data, this is the observed data and predicted data. Both has to match. Once it is matched, then your model is ready for uh, the prediction. And it is not an easy job to history match the one. Well, there is all in reservoir simulation. There is always an uncertainty. As I said, that uh, the one of some of the wells in Kurdistan uh, region, uh, they were not expecting the water production. It was, but after a few years, they started getting water in the wells. Well, there is uncertainty always. So in reservoir simulation, always remember that if a man will begin with certainty, he shall end up in doubts. But if he will be content to begin with doubt, he shall shall end up in uncertainties well what are the problems uncertainties that can happen for example the size of reservoir for example you expected the the size of your reservoir is one kilometer but actually it is two kilometer and how much is the aerial extent what is the thickness so you have to make sure that you are not uncertain you are sure about the size of the reservoir 
of course bigger size means more oil and uh, different scenarios so size uh, contained and net to gross thickness and all those things matter in reservoir well you have to make sure that there are what kind of faults it has folds it has any fractures and so on make sure the rock property permeability and porosities are fine they are not wrong and uh, there are many fluid property like formation volume factor viscosity you have to make sure that your laboratory give you the accurate results or uh, sometimes even you don't some of the data is not existing in your laboratories for example you don't have the bubble point pressure which is the most important parameter in the handling of reservoir simulation so this is a simulation model as i said there are two models in conclusion one is the black oil model other one is the uh, the composition model in this course we will run both the models we will show you both the models how they are run and uh, what are their benefits we will have lots of case studies using those models and so on well reservoir there are so many applications that we do well in the early stages we look for the development plan for example now how many wells we need to put for example we have the reservoir here also in circle okay how many wells we should put three four five six so after we have the history matched reservoir model simulation we we can put 10 wells and see the production into it how much oil we can produce we can put 20 wells so we can actually simulate the behavior after we have the established successful reservoir model then after that the once you know that this much oil you are going to produce you can really develop the facility like what kind of size separator size you need what kind of if you are dealing with offshore what kind of platform you need to install and in offshore we are more careful because the investment there is more and and so on and number of location and types of wells and which kind of how many wells you are going to drill and so on then this simulation may be applied in later stage also and in this case sometimes when the pressure has declined then we have to do the secondary recovery or EOR so we look at the scenario we try to do the simulation on the real model and then we look at the possible and evaluate the different development plans for in this case sometimes as I said there is a water production problem there are some gas oil ratio is increasing and the sum of the wells are not producing as per their performance so you do the simulation you try to figure out that what's the problem is possible in this in this matter make sure that whatever uh, model you run it has to be history matched and as i said what is history matching you have to match compare your data simulated results with the real uh, field results if both are in good uh, uh, harmony if both are showing the similar results then you can predict the performance uh, using your reservoir simulation model otherwise it garbage in Will just produce garbage out your data has to be good quality run in a good quality manner you have to upscale it you have to make sure that your reservoir model is history match only then you can and run the reservoir simulation well this was just the introduction and uh, thank you very much if you have any questions you can leave in my email address or we can discuss live uh, uh, in, the, in the class online class that we are going to do soon uh, now after this one we will go for lecture number two which is mostly will deal with the with the python so thank you very much